Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, tonight's video, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to run the myriad of emotions here. I might range from spicy to emotional. I don't know, but this kind of irritates me. In the American left right now, all you hear is gun trafficking, gun violence, gun crime. That's all you hear is legal owners of firearms are the problem and guns are the problem. And so we should get rid of them completely, even though we're legal citizens who have the Second Amendment right in the Bill of Rights. OK, it's pretty straightforward. They're attacking our gun rights day in, day out. But that's the reasons. Gun trafficking. Well, I'm looking at an article right now from the New York Times that says a new arms bazaar has popped up in Afghanistan, feeding that entire region with cheap and a surplus of M4 military-style assault weapons. These same people who tell us and lecture us that we can't have these rights because we're too dangerous and they're weapons of war literally just trafficked $83 billion, handed it, left it behind, and now an, a basically illicit arms trade has been founded in a very unstable region in the entire world. This is going to go great. It's linked in the description box below. I want to know what you guys think on this because this is the height of hypocrisy, and this is why we need to dive in. And also, this, it's possible in this article, they might be saying that M4s, there's so many of them there, they could be selling for $23.60 U.S., I don't know that because it's weirdly written. You guys can let me know. Let's dive in. All right. For sale now. U.S. supplied weapons in Afghan gun shops. The Taliban seized troves of American weapons and vehicles from surrendering Afghan soldiers. Now gun dealers are doing brisk business. Yes, we, we left behind an entire arsenal. We funded and armed a military of about 300,000 Afghans that are now in the hands of the Taliban. So... Not thousands, hundreds of thousands, not to mention the surplus and the ammunition and the heavy weaponry. In the chaos of the American military withdrawal, Biden, and the Taliban takeover this summer, thousands of American-made weapons and tons of military equipment were seized by the militants as government military bases surrendered or were overrun. Um, not to mention American lives were, were wasted on the sand for no reason. But thousands of American-made weapons... Uh-uh. $83 billion? Mm, no, that's not thousands. That's hundreds of thousands at minimum. But let's keep going. This is where the math breaks down. You guys tell me what they're wording here because it's kind of weird because this is either like $23 for an AR or it's 680,000 rupees. I can't decide. You let me know. American M4 carbines, weapons of war, sell for about $4,000, the dealers said especially if equipped with a laser sight or an under-barrel grenade launcher. In contrast, a Kalashnikov rifle sells for about $900, the dealer said, and a Russian-made rocket-propelled grenade launcher for around $1,100. Pistols that NATO forces supplied to Afghan police officers sell for around $350. This is the part where the math gets interesting. Almost all of their transactions are in Pakistani rupees and in cash. So... If you go by that $4,000 amount and you translate out into Pakistani rupees, here's how many rupees it looks like for $4,000 US. 683,000. Pretty good exchange rate. But how many Pakistanis do you know they're going to be walking around with a suitcase full of 683,000 rupees in Afghanistan? Or it could go the other way and they could actually be saying 4,000 rupees in this article, which would equate to $23.43 for a full M4 battle-ready rifle. I'm just saying, guys, um, if that's the case, who's flying? Because I'm buying. Just saying, $23. If there are that many we left behind, and it truly is $23, great job, everybody, as Ben Shapiro likes to say. But let's take a look at what they're saying now even further. In interviews, these three weapon dealers in Kandahar said that dozens of Afghans have set up weapon shops in Afghanistan's south. I wonder if they're FFL dealers. Selling American-made pistols, rifles, grenades, binocs, and night vision goggles. The equipment was originally provided to the Afghan security forces under a U.S. training and assistance program that cost American taxpayers more than $83 billion through two decades of war. We left it behind in a hurry because we were badly mismanaged on the way out, and we left blood in the sand. This gets me fired up. These same exact people who perpetrated this, mm, I can't even say the right word, the people who are responsible for this are sitting, us, sitting here telling us that we can't have our gun rights because we're not responsible, and anybody who gets a gun into a gun control city is a trafficker. $83 billion 
M4s are going for $23 US, maybe? Or 683,000 rupees? Sounds like someone else is the traffickers. Especially, you know, just saying. During the insurgency, the Taliban eagerly sought out American-supplied weapons and gear. That's because we make great stuff. But now, much of that weaponry is being sold to Afghan entrepreneurs because Taliban demand has eased with the end of combat, the gun merchant said. They say that many gun dealers have smuggled the weapons to Pakistan where demand for American-made weapons is strong. So we've sprung up a completely new arms trade in Bazaar because demand is dying down in Afghanistan. It's now going to ship over into Pakistan. I wonder how long until something very terrible happens with an influx of American-made rifles that we left behind didn't destroy or capture. And that's what I have for you guys tonight. The hypocrisy is rife. And as long as we are down with the facts and we understand what we're talking about, this is some powerful stuff. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I will see you tomorrow morning on The Bullet Points. I'm Braden, signing out.